Evaluating unfamiliar formulas. Well, using formulas is really easy. Just remember to plug and chug. And by plug and chug, I mean we're just going to take the formula, we're going to plug in our values, and we're just going to chug along until we get our solution. Now, the first formula is an easy one. And it is volume of a cube. The formula is we take one side and we cube it. Let's substitute in. So the sides are all the same on a cube. And this one is 3 meters. So we're going to plug in 3 for our side. We're going to cube 3, which is 3 times 3 times 3. And then we're just going to label our solution, which is 27 cubic meters. And I can write it like that, or I could label it like this. Now remember, with volume, very important that our labels be in cubic units. Now here's another formula for volume, and this is for finding the volume of a cylinder. So let's start with our formula, which is pi times radius squared times the height. We're going to use 3.14 for pi. So I'm going to substitute that in. We're going to multiply that times our radius. Now our radius is 3. We're going to square the radius and then multiply that times the height, which is 6. Now remember, order of operations, we need to do the exponent first. So we would do pi times 3 squared is 9 times 6. Now remember the commutative property of multiplication, doesn't matter what order I multiply these three factors. I'm going to do 9 times 6 first, which is 54. And I'm using a calculator here. I'm going to do 54 times pi times 3.14. So the volume of this cylinder would be 169.56 cubic centimeters. That's easy. This is the formula for finding the volume of a cone. So we'll start with the formula. Volume is 1 third times pi times the radius squared times the height. All right, let's substitute in what we know. So we're going to do one-third. I'm, I'm going to use pi again, or I'm sorry, 3.14 for pi, times the radius squared, so our radius is 3, times the height, which is 10. Okay. So we need to do our exponent first. So it would be one-third times... 3.14, I'm going to square 3, which is 9, times 10. Now here I've got four factors. I've got 1 third, I've got 3.14, I've got 9, and I've got 10. I can multiply these in any order that I want. And I notice that if I multiply 1 third and 3, that's what I'm going to do, because 1 third times 3 would just be 3. So 1 third times 9 is 3. And then I'm going to multiply 3 times 10 next. So 3 times 10 is 30 times 3.14. So the volume of this cone would be 94.2 cubic meters. All right, here is the formula for volume of a sphere. And this is a pretty big sphere. It's at a radius of 3 miles. So let's start with the formula, which is 4 over 3 times pi times the radius cubed. So I'm going to do 4 thirds. Let's plug in. Let's substitute in what we know. So 4 thirds. I'm going to use 3.14 for pi. And our radius is 3. And I'm going to cube that. Okay, so got to do our exponent first. So that'd be 4 thirds times 3.14 and 3 cubed is 27. Now I think next I'm going to multiply 4 thirds times 27. I'm actually going to do the work up here. 4 thirds times 27. And I can cancel these. So that would be 36. So 4 thirds times 27 is 36. 
and I'm going to do 36 times 3.14. Remember, it doesn't matter what order I multiply those. And then uh, 36 times 3.14, the volume of this sphere would be 113.04 cubic miles. All right, let's do one last question here. Oh, I'm sorry, we've got two more. Let's do pyramid. So the formula for a pyramid is volume, and this is the volume formula, one-third times side squared times the height. All right, let's substitute in. So that would be one-third, and the side is six, so we're going to square that, times the height. And we're not using the slant height here, we're using the actual height of the pyramid, so that's times 8. So we need to do our exponent first. So it's 1 third times 36 times 8. And 1 third times 36, that's easy. That would just be 12. So 12 times 8. So the volume would be 96 cubic meters. Okay, one last formula. Now this is a formula you can use to convert Celsius into Fahrenheit. So if the temperature outside is 20 degrees Celsius, what would the temperature be in Fahrenheit? Well, let's take our formula. We take Celsius times 9 over 5 plus 32, and that'll give us our Fahrenheit. Well, we know Celsius is 20, and I'm going to multiply that times 9 over 5, and I'm going to add 32, and that'll give us Fahrenheit. Okay, let's solve this. So I'm going to make 20 improper. I'm going to multiply that times 9 over 5. Now, remember, order of, the order does matter here. We need to do our multiplication before we add. So remember PEMDAS. All right, now I can, I can see here that we can cancel. And then 4 times 9 is 36. So all I need to do is add 36 and 32. And that'll give me my corresponding Fahrenheit, which would be 68 degrees. So 20 degrees Celsius is equal to 68 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's how you use... Unfamiliar formulas, just remember, plug and chug.